neighbours, title rivals, put simply, last season Rugby Town and Coventry Spinks were the best of enemies. Only three points separated the league champions from the runners-up after the Valley's sensational start was overshadowed by the Spinks' charge to the title. Now both sides are bona fide members of the pitching in Northern Premier League and both want to keep it that way. Join us for coverage of the M6 Derby sponsored by Cahill Contractors and the commentary from Liam Cook. Coventry Spinks are in buoyant mood after wrapping up their first ever step four victory two weeks ago. They make two in course changes from the Rushton lineup. Luke Downs' controversial red card could be overturned, so he serves his one match suspension, while Jordan Haywood also misses out after limping off early on his next drive. James Grayson makes his long-awaited first start of the season. Match winner and former rugby man Dylan Parker gets the nod up top, and we could see two Spinks debutants in action from the bench in midfielder Alfonso Castellano and forward Caelan Bailey Nichols. Rugby have dipped into the transfer market in a bid to arrest a run of four straight defeats. The Valley snapping off three new recruits in the last week, two of which start today. Goalkeeper Nika Libert signed from Carlton and Leamington legend James Mace arriving from Baldmere. Both make their debuts with 17-year-old Shrewsbury Loney, Curly Moore on the bench. Francis, Retchy and Wilson make up the five changes from the 5-1 defeat to Cambridge with McDonald and Woolridge dropping to the bench. Your referee this afternoon is Harry Bross. That's a poor corner nodded away by Whiteside. Shipman punted upfield by Woodward looking for the former rugby man Dylan Parker who got the winner two weeks ago against AFC Russian and Diamonds. Slips it through for Shipman in the penalty area. Matty Shipman drags it wide at the far post. But an early promising sign for the Sphinx frontman that he will get the service today. These two corners have yet to create anything concrete. Let's see if Sphinx can go on better. Lewis Guest being impeded by Mace. Trying to some separation. Edging Guale in there too. It's towards Guest, gets it away, and Dylan Parker tried to stab it in. But I think the head of Fitzharris got there first and nods it out for another corner to come in from the right wing. Woodward. It's Shipman and Hale off the line. Sahota, the man of the moment, keeping rugby's clean sheet intact by the barest of margins. Woodward again. Is it third time lucky for Spinks? Towards Edging Guale, not away in the near post. This time by Fitzharris. Out to Bryson. Shot couldn't find its way for a sea of blue and red. And now it's rugby on the counter. Alan Cora sets up. Jordan Wilson on the left hand side. Sahota making himself available. Through ball into Sahota. Out comes Fallows. Goes through Sahota. Referee points for the corner only. Sahota making an impact to both ends of the pitch in the last 60 seconds, but Keelan Fallows has gone down hurt. It looks like it may well be a head injury. Fallows is good to go after a delay of three minutes, which will be added on at the end of the first half. And now Rugby have got a job to do. Can they take advantage with this corner? Whipped in by Fitzharris. And somehow Sahota was unable to pull it into an empty net at the far post. It was an awkward one for Sahota, an awkward height, but any sort of clean contact would surely have sent the ball into the back of the net from that distance. Right by Fallows. Chests it down the edge of the area. Woodward drives it. Oh, and it was spilled wide by Leverd. Not a convincing save at all from the rugby number one. Wasn't expecting the other. Had to scramble across to the right and just got his hands to it. Redhead offering the short option. Woodward goes long and punched away just next to the crossbar from Libbard. Was that heading all the way in? It's over to Hota to Wilson. Wilson can collect it. It's onto the boot of Edginguele. Bryson. Neat ball to Shipman. Across to Jack Redhead and Parker looking to find his way through. Good chance by Francis. Shipman gets the second. Lee tries to hold him up. Strike by Shipman and Dylan 
Parker. Oh, whiskers wide. Via a deflection. Parker looking to be the match winner again. They have been passengers for the last 10 minutes or so. Can they make their mark on this game? Very nearly is a good punch over the bar from Keelan Follows, keeping out Liam Francis. Two back for rugby, everyone else in and around that penalty area. Captain Fitzharris, going to lead by example. It's knotted down and Wilson can strike. Somehow kept up the line, in fact, no, the referee's flagging it in. I believe it was Luke English who got the ball over the line. The Rugby Town fans celebrated. First goal, over the white. Lines with flags. Number three. Sorry, number two, Luke English. And it has been confirmed it was Luke Going English with the goal. Thirty-two minutes. PC Downing on the turnstile. Summerfield staying back. English launches it in, nodded up, and Sahota thought he had goal number two on a silver platter, but parry clear, Keelan Fellows keeping Sphinx in it. <coughs> right, taking their time and setting this up, there will be at least three minutes of added time after Keelan Fellows received treatment for a head injury earlier in the match. Be too many stoppages apart from that. It's Harris. France is beaten mid-air by Bryce. Driving on is Summerfield. Summerfield's delivery, Sahota gets there just in time ahead of Woodward. Ryan Sahota straight into the rugby faithful. Close in by Woodward. Shipman's up there and is well held by Leonard. Admit of the midsection of the former Colton goalkeeper, but able to grab onto it before Sphinx could turn home the seconds. It's Shorrock. Couldn't hit the target, not a bad effort at all from the Sphinx winger. Libbard was like a statue, you could do nothing about it. Trying to extend rugby's advantage in the opening two minutes of the second half. Ballows towards the edge of the area, Guest backing into Mace. Mace's header as far as Woodward, overhead kick by Woodward, he just glances past Guest and launched away. Edging Guay trying to shield from Wilson, the former Coventry City man. Wilson beats him for pace, a ball into Akakura! Should have put it away! Had plenty of power but couldn't keep it beneath the post. Edwin Akankora could have put the game out of sight right there and then. Edinguele takes it to Jack Redhead. Floated in by Redhead. Chested down by Whiteside. Shipman with the return ball. Redhead. Shark with him. Redhead digs it in. Guest was up there. It was over Guest. Oh, and a fantastic effort of goal by Dylan Park. It was dipping beneath the crossbar, but straight down the line of sight of the rugby keeper. Bryson shining up that ball. Ready to launch it in. Guest tries to flick it on. It's on the edge of the area and nodded away by Lee. Shark. Now Redhead, he's got Wilson behind him, and Retchie in front of him. Retchie brings him down on the edge of the area, it's a penalty! It was over the line. Coventry Spings have a spot kick. Redhead between a rock and a hard place and found his way out of it. Retchie stepped in and took him down and it was within the confines of the box. Oh, 
Well, Libert has a chance to make himself a hero on his debut, but the man Tegna penalty has been a hero on many occasions. Cannon Woodward steps up and scores! Equalises with Coventry Spinks! And Woodward flies to the ground. And a red card for the goalkeeper Libert. And a yellow card for Mace. Disaster for rugby. 60 seconds ago they were 1 0 up and had 11 men. Now it's 1 1 and they're down to 10. Libert kicked out of Woodward as he tried to retrieve the ball. It's a debut of nightmares for Nike Libert. And now rugby find themselves not only down to 10 men. Without a goalkeeper. Well, 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 and to boot, their lead is gone. Well, Cannon Woodward has just completely changed this game. And who else but the skipper could do it? Well, ironically, it's the goal scorer, Luke English, who's going in goal. But this is one tall order for the Valley. Well, you do say that anything can and usually does happen in the beautiful game, but who expected that? Now we've got an intriguing finale on our hands. Sahota skips past Brighton and a challenge in from the side by Jack Downs. And he's already on a yellow card and this could be 10 on 10. It's 10 men on 10 men. Two red cards in the space of two minutes. Downs following through on the ankle of Sahota. There was only one decision for the referee to make. And Downs becomes the second member of the Downs family to receive a red card in the last two matches. About to come from James Bryson. Nodded across towards Parker, and Shipman buries it! Clean cut strike from Matty Shipman, his second goal in two matches. Now he's enjoying step four, and the comeback is complete. Rugby were always going to be vulnerable. With the absence of a goalkeeper, English did his best but couldn't get down to the effort from Shipman in time. It nestled into the bottom goal, corner. Goal, and Coventry Spinks take the deserved lead up Butlin Road. Now Redhead. Uh, Bailey Nichols tried to play the overlap, but Redhead wasn't making the run. Whiteside. Now Woodward, Bailey Nichols chests it down. Here's Redhead. Still looking for that third goal. And Redhead is through. Can he square? He'll shoot instead and it flashes across the face of goal. Shipman takes it straight into the corner. May tries to rub it off him. And it's blasted out of Bailey Nichols for the throw, but it won't be taken. Two in two for Spinks. What a match! What a spectacle at Butlin Road! Coventry Spinks hold on in dramatic circumstances. They don't do things by halves, do they? Rugby taking a scrappy lead in the first half through English, who ended up going in goal after Callum Woodward's penalty was converted. And Nika Libbard was sent off for kicking the Sphinx captain. Just 60 seconds later, Jack Downs was given his marching orders. But Matty Shipman sealed the three points for the Sphinx in the battle of the old title rivals. And it certainly lived up to the billing. Final score in the pitching in Northern Premier League Midlands. Rugby Town 1, Coventry Sphinx 2.